In this kinematics problem, we have an airplane on a straight runway that's going to take off. The airplane starts at rest, and there is a wind on this day. It's 30 miles per hour parallel to the runway. Uh, we're given in this problem the acceleration of the uh, aircraft, 1.6 meters per second squared. The airspeed at liftoff required is 160 miles per hour. Notice this is the airspeed, not the speed of the plane on the ground. What happens now if we go into the wind, we take off into the wind? What's the minimum length of runway that will be required for this to occur? Well, it's useful to make a little sketch so you can uh, clearly label your uh, numerical quantities, get them attached to the right symbols. So we have the plane at rest here, V naught equals zero. That's the ground speed, wind coming into the uh, face of the plane. Down here at the takeoff point, the plane is moving at the ground speed of 130 miles per hour. Uh, why isn't that 160? 130 miles per hour. 130 miles per hour is the ground speed. The wind is coming into the plane at 30 miles per hour. So the airspeed of the plane will be 160 miles per hour. So our uh, task here is to uh, do a little calculation, a little misspelling of ground, or a little clarity in the letters here. Our calculation needs to rely on this 130 uh, miles per hour takeoff point ground speed. Well, I want to do this in metric units, so uh, multiply by 0.447 meters per second for one mile per hour, just a conversion factor. The units of miles per hour cancel, and we have a ground speed at takeoff of 58.1 meters per second. I'll make use of a kinematic equation because we're told the acceleration is constant we have uniform constant acceleration. We have the capability of using this kinematic equation where the final velocity after the distance x is uh, of motion has taken place, this final velocity equals initial velocity, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times this distance traveled. So insert the numbers here, 58.1 meters per second, make sure to square it. Start from rest, so that's a zero squared. Two, we're given 1.6 meters per second squared for the acceleration. And if you square the 58.1, you try this on your own calculator, kind of double check my work here. Two times 1.6 is a factor of 3.2. Divide both sides by 3.2, we find x is 1,055 meters. And to convert that into miles, if you're interested, then uh, one mile divided by 1609 is the conversion factor. And I come up with 0.656 miles, about 7 tenths of a mile. What if the plane is in the other direction? I probably should have uh, redrawn this with the plane traveling to the left. I just thought of that now. But mentally shift yourself around here. Maybe it's a different day with a 30 mile per hour wind blowing to the right instead of to the left. Um, but use your imagination and uh, bear with my drawing here. Uh, but now we're uh, in the situation where we're moving with the wind as we take off. Well, what changes? What changes is that the ground speed now needs to be 190 miles per hour in order to achieve an airspeed of 160 miles per hour. This plane moving 190 miles per hour to the right is going with the wind, so it's only moving 160 miles per hour faster than the wind. Let's see what effect that has on our calculation. So again, I want to use meters per second for the speed, so convert the miles per hour of our takeoff speed, 84.9 meters per second. Again, constant acceleration, so we make use of the kinematic equation. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance. And insert the numbers. You should do this on your own calculator. Perhaps pause here. And your calculator hopefully will show 2,254 meters, rounding off a little bit. Converting to miles again. And now I come up with 1.4 miles. Compare this to the other case. 
about seven tenths of a mile if we're going into the wind, 1.4 miles required of pavement if we're going with the wind, uh, double the length. And this uh, bigger effect happens because of the square here on the velocity. Um, that's how this, uh, the numbers are getting so much bigger here for this uh, uh, second case of taking off in the same direction as the wind. This assumes the wind is perfectly parallel to the runway, uh, not at an angle, not a crosswind. So it is a special case, but uh, hopefully an illustrative example. If you want some more example problems worked out for physics or for astronomy, these are the websites, totally free, no registration required at the website. You'll see a list of videos. Uh, there's over 500 now for physics and astronomy. And some are general interest videos for the public in the astronomy uh, collection. But there's a description of the video, how long it is, and a direct link to uh, the YouTube uh, video. If you do uh, find some benefit from these videos, please click on the subscribe button. And ask your instructor if you have questions.